Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? The evolution of technology can be fascinating, especially when it leads to a product that changes the world. This time, let's take a look at one of the stepping stones along the way to a device we're all familiar with. This is the Sony Clie PEG TJ37. Its rear label describes it as a personal entertainment organizer, but most people would recognize it as a PDA or personal digital assistant. It was released in February 2004 at a list price of $299 US, at a time when PDA sales were dramatically slowing. But more on that a bit later. The TJ37 featured a 200 MHz processor based on the ARM architecture, 32 megabytes of RAM, and user-expandable storage using Sony's memory stick format. Sony was a licensee of Palm's operating system, so the handheld shipped with Palm OS 5, which featured new multimedia and network capabilities. And it was those features that set the TJ37 apart from other models in Sony's lineup. It cost $100 more than the lower-end TJ27, but added MP3 file playback and built-in 802.11b wireless networking. It was also capable of playing videos in the proprietary Kinoma format, but the feature that most caught my attention was its built-in digital camera. It was only capable of taking still photos and lacked a flash. Resolution was limited to 640x480, or about 0.3 megapixels, whereas pocket digital cameras at the time were generally capable of 2-4 to four megapixels. As you'd expect with a small sensor, images were pretty soft and low light performance was a noisy mess. There was a 2x zoom function, but it was digital, not optical, so using it reduced image quality even further. Despite its limitations though, Sony took the camera functionality seriously. It was integrated into the lower right corner of the PDA and didn't affect the overall size or shape of the device. It blended in seamlessly. A slide switch closed and opened the lens cover, and there was even a dedicated shutter button where you'd expect it, under your right index finger. Sony made a few other tweaks to the otherwise standard Palm PDA experience. The up and down navigation buttons were replaced by a thumb wheel for easier scrolling, and there was a custom home screen skin to take advantage of it, though you could switch back to stock if you wanted. Reviews of the TJ37 were mixed. Many praised its crisp 320x320 pixel color LCD, but also lamented its limited brightness. Some found the Wi-Fi functionality to be flaky, but the sound quality of MP3 playback was generally considered better than its competition, specifically Palm's Zyre 71 from early 2003. I found mention of the battery not being user replaceable, which gave me pause when I went to order a new one. But compared to modern electronics, swapping it out was a breeze. Just a single tri-wing screw to access the compartment, and the new battery plugs right in. This was considered non-user replaceable in 2004. My how things change. And 2004 itself saw considerable change. Up to that point, there was pretty distinct separation between PDAs and cell phones. But as each market continued to add features to its products, the line began to blur. Smartphones were already becoming a thing, and Palm's own Trio 600 was a popular model that even included a camera. But its price of $600, or about $750 today, generally saw it adopted mostly by business users. The PDA market was already in decline from its peak in 2001, and Sony knew it wouldn't get any better. Just a few months after launch, the TJ37's price had already started to fall in the face of lackluster sales. In June 2004, the company announced it would stop selling PDAs in North America and Europe, and the TJ37 was one of the last three models the company would release there. It continued development for the Japanese market, but even that was short-lived. Sony discontinued the Clie product line entirely in the spring of 2005.
In the coming years, smartphones would see rapid adoption in the mass market. Names new and old, including both Sony and Palm themselves, would compete for a share in what would grow to become a business worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Likewise, PDAs quickly lost consumers' attention. Just a few months after Sony's exit, Palm released its last two models in October of 2005, and three years later, finally admitted that it wouldn't develop new ones. Smartphones are, of course, ubiquitous today, but it's interesting to see where they came from. It doesn't seem so much that cell phones simply added PDA and multimedia functions, or that PDAs gained phone capabilities, but rather that the two met in the middle, smartphones being the natural evolution for both of them. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.